Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study, a new week of studies, study number 196, I believe. Before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the time that we have this morning uh, to open your word together and to receive strength and power for this week ahead. We know, Lord, that um, you've been guiding and leading in our study and showing us wonderful things out of your word. And this humbles us and allows us to see our need of you. So we invite your presence here again into our midst, that we can commune with Christ and that um, he can commune with us. I pray for an open mind and heart uh, to receive the blessings that you have for us. We ask of your spirit that you can help us in all of our troubles and be with us now. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. We, we started looking at Daniel chapter 12. I'm just going to put a heading here. And this this paper is, uh, it, I'm hoping while I'm in Australia that I'll be able to uh, work on it basically in the middle of the night there. That's kind of the plan. So I should have about five or six hours a day to work on putting this paper together. That's what I'm hoping because there's a lot of writing to do and a lot of editing and a lot of reviewing. But anyway, what's what's been coming together has been uh, pretty remarkable, the things that we have found. And we finished off chapter 11. Uh, we didn't put all the present truth details in there, but I didn't think they were that important in the context of, of you know, once I put the paper together, we might we might be able to to review some of those things and uh, see how we would apply it in the present truth. But we know that there is, that we are in 2024, and and we're looking at that as the period of the close of probation for the movement. Um, it was, I can't remember, there was something that, uh, yeah, this was this phrase that we had, which was, the 1961 and the 6313, 8,374 days from 9-11 to August 15th, 2024. Now, uh, so we had this symbolic date in 2024. We had the first day of the first month in 2024, which was April 10th, 2024, in some of our lines. Uh, we had January 1st, 2024. And August 15th, 2024. And that's a symbol of the destruction of Jerusalem, the 10th day of the fifth month that it brings us to, and also to the midnight cry. So my view is not because of time setting or anything, but just the reality of what's happened in the movement. We can already see that there's been this separation that has occurred in the movement that it, that is real. I mean, the Canadian American group as a whole has no interest in what we're doing. They're following Jeff, and we know that Jeff is Miller after October 22nd, 1844. And that we're really, as we've noted before, we're in that period, that transition period in 1850, you know, maybe even into 1851. But, you know, definitely we've, the work that we would have done, I would say that it's, it's similar to the 1850 charts in, in that we did the study as Ellen White said they did, you know, obviously the groups that existed then, the separation of the groups that existed developed over that time. And we have a, a really strong parallel. So we're just saying in 2024, that's just kind of the reality. The reality is something we have to accept that the movement is not uh, going to listen to us as a movement, as individuals. There may be some who are going to listen to our studies, watch the studies, but as the the groups, the Canadian American group, they're not going to join with us in any meaningful way, that's for sure. Now, when we started looking at the numbers in Daniel chapter 12, what is it that we found? What what did Daniel chapter 12 yield? Chapter 12, verse 1 to 4. And I don't know why I put chapter 12 there because that doesn't go there. Got to go back here. Here's Daniel 12. So what were we finding with these numbers? 
in Daniel chapter 12? What were they pointing us to? Because we, we didn't have many that, that led anywhere. We have this one here that gives us this connection with Stephen Jameson's birthday. So we had the 6256 in the 1931. That's basically the main thing that we saw. And then we also looked at the children of thy people, and that connected us as well, 7,092 7, days from the end of 9-11 to Stephen Jameson's 52nd birthday on February 11th, 2021. And we know that 52 times 360 is 18,720. So what was this showing us? What, what does Stephen Jameson's birthday show us? What, what is Stephen's birthday as a symbol? What does it tie us to? I mean, it's there in the chart, but his birthday ties together 9-11 and 11-9. It already had done that previously. So we already had it tied together. But now we can see if we go from Stephen Jameson's birthday in February 11th, 2024, we have uh, 6,256 times two days, plus if that goes to 11 9, And then if we count the days from 11 9, 19, it's 1,555 days, and the sum of the divisors of that number is 1872. So what is this showing us? Because we know this is when Michael stands up, this closer probation symbol that we're applying to our history. We're not saying that this is the closer probation, but just with the movement. Okay, we, we've discussed this before, but I don't want, I, I want people to, to express it. So we got February 11th. It's Stephen Jameson's birthday. It ties together 9-11 and 11-9s in these verses and, and in other verses as well. It's connected to um, 11,900 days and 1,190 minutes. So what is it representing? Beginning of the cl close of probation. Okay. Yeah, so it, so it has to do with the close of probation. But why Stephen Jameson's birthday? Why February 11th? What was the symbol that we talked about that's that's there in the date, February 11th? But don't remember? I'm not recalling directly. Okay, so we have a two and two ones. Now, 11, we, we can look at in the story of Joseph, right? We can look at it, 11 generations. You could say it's 11 times two, which is 22, right? Right, which is a symbol of restoration. Right. So even though we have this this close of probation, there is also a restoration symbol there. Right. So so God is also restoring the movement at this time, you know, because we, we look at, you know, like my birthday, February 6th. Well, we got a 62 in there, uh, 62 weeks as a symbol. You know, you could say it's six times two, two, six times two, which is 12, you know, it, symbol of the covenant. So, so we have these, these symbols together, right? So we have all of this structure. It's telling us something about the movement that this 9-11, this 1989, and then 2024. So Stephen's birthday in 2024. So we have January 1st, 2024. That's marked Stephen Jameson's birthday in 2024. That's marked, uh, which, which is a symbol of restoration. We have first day, the first month, April 10th, 2024. That's mentioned. And then we have August 15th, the 10th day, the fifth month. So two symbols together in 2024. So all of these things point to this year, its significance as far as this movement. So when we look at this next verse, well, even if we go back here, we we have the close of probation. And we have the, even at that same time and at that time, right? So this this phrase that gives us this period uh, it's 1931 plus 6256, uh, which equals 8187, right? And that gives us from 911 to Stephen Jameson's birthday, right? So we mark that. So we have, and at that time, shall thy people be delivered? So we can know that this deliverance within this movement, within a context of a type, is occurring. And everyone that shall be found written in the book, right? So there's still numbers that we would need to analyze. And I, I've tried looking at these, but I haven't drawn any really strong conclusions about them. 
But then it says, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. So one thing we can say about that verse, the next verse there, verse uh, three, I think it is. It could be verse two. That's verse two. That is talking about the separation of the two classes, right? Now, if we're going to say that um, that they awake and they sleep in the dust of the earth, how how can we look at that? How can we look at this as a symbol as applying to the movement presently? Because obviously, we're not going to have a special resurrection of the dead. You know, that's not what's like in our line in the present truth application. We know the historical application. It's pretty straightforward. It's no no mystery there. So how does this special resurrection, how is our movement typifying that? Or are we typifying that? Are we being typified by the dry bones? I mean, obviously, Ezekiel 37 uh, fits in here. But, you know, it fits in lots of other places. But I, I'm just thinking more about this verse itself. How does this verse, how are we typifying what this verse is is talking about? Because, I mean, uh, it depends what you mean by how you're applying Ezekiel's dry bones. Because I think that 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 is actually more, you have all of these steps. That That is a line, right? You have these bones, right? They come together. There, there's this, to me, Ezekiel's, okay, let's put it this way. My understanding of the lines, the line upon line that we have used, and I've brought this up many times, is that it's like a... Um, anatomy book with all the different transparencies and the different layers. And that's what we see in Ezekiel 37, in the first section, not the joining of the sticks part. We see, we see basically what we have seen in our lines, that as we add line upon line, you get to see the whole person. Now, when they awake, that's when the Holy Spirit is breathed into them. The wind blows upon them. Okay. And and we've used that wind to represent what? So let's let's go there. Let's go to Ezekiel 37. So the sinews in the flesh and then the skin covers them above, but there's no breath in them. And, and we can say that about the lines, right? That we have this line upon line. At what point does the breath come upon these lines? You can see the word breath is ruach, which means spirit. And the word wind is also ruach. So when it talks about the four winds, it's the four breaths, right? So, I mean, they could have just used the word, oh, wind breathe upon us. And that word breathe, nafak, means to puff or to blow. So there's these two words that are, they're not related etymologically, but um, they they are often interchanged. And and basically, ruach is, is a wind. A breath, it's air, right? Breathing is the act of, of blowing. So breathing is what we do. A breath is what we, what, what results. Okay. But anyway, we have the four winds there. So the question is, what fills these lines with life? What, what causes them to live? God's word, wouldn't it be? Well, it's the four winds. I mean, they are God's word. Now, Daniel says, you know, the latter rain. It's kind of true, but that's not the answer I'm looking for. Okay, so one is he's going to prophesy unto the wind, right? That that word prophesy, you know, you could say it means to speak or sing by inspiration. And, and so he prophesies unto the wind. And then the wind, and, and what he says is, come from the four winds, O breath and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So the way that we're looking at these slain, we know there is an application that these are God's people. But but this is much more clearly has to do with the message. And we recognize winds as being also um, like wars and strife. Wars okay. and strife. And yeah. wouldn't, that, wouldn't that include Islam? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so that's how we've always understood it. It has to do with the prophecy regarding Islam. That is the prophecy regarding 9-11, right? That, that's how our movement has interpreted this. That at 9-11, we have these four winds coming, 
right? Not all at once, but they're going to be restrained as well. And then at some point, they're, they're going to be let loose again. So the symbol between the Day of Atonement uh, from February 11th, 69 to 11989, extra 10. I, I, I don't know what you're saying, Angela. I was just looking at the span of time, and I got a, a 10 7, and then there's an extra 10. Okay, how do you get 10 7? Just, can you explain it more? Uh, 107 110. Fine, 107 10. But how are you getting that if you're not explaining how you're getting that? Between those dates, because they're they're there on 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 your your chart, and that's just what came to me. So, so on my chart, uh, the uh, the time span between. I gotta see where I've written it now. Oh, oh, you're talking about uh, ten thousand seven hundred and ten days. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we have uh, yeah, obviously ten seven, and then ten days. Okay. Yeah, so we looked at that before. Does that relate to anything we're talking about right now? Not. Perhaps not, but I was just thinking uh, since the church and most of the world did not receive what, what was hap- hap- happening on, you know, when Jeff, Jeff and Kathy first started the study, maybe there's like a closing, well, a closing of the yeah, COP for, for the church for those who did not, to not, not remain vigilant. So everything is catching them by surprise or they misinterpret it when it does occur. Yeah. Okay. Now I don't know if that's right though. I'm trying to figure this out. What did I do? A chart might be wrong though, because I think the 10,710 is the difference between 11,900 and 1,190. So I don't think that that chart is right. I got to correct that. So it's not literally that many days between there. Um, it would be, you would have to subtract 300, uh, 3,134 to actually get the right number. So that number is there as a symbol, but it's just not actually there. So I think the number should be, yeah, 7576 between his birthday and November 9th, 1989. So I'll, I'll correct that chart, right? Cause if you look at this, you can see that that doesn't add up because this here together adds up to 11,900 days, these two. So you have to subtract that. So 7576 is the the actual number of days that should be there. And I'll change that. It's a good thing you pointed that out. Now, uh, so going back here. So we know this has to do with Islam, right? So th- that that's the way that we've interpreted it. But we're... We're making an application of this that is we're talking about in Daniel chapter 12, the special resurrection. Now, Ezekiel 37 is not particularly talking about the special resurrection, right? We use it more as far as the church waking up. And so that's how we're going to address this special resurrection in Daniel chapter 12. We're obviously not going to say it's the special resurrection that happens in our movement or anything. But there are two classes, and they are going to awake, and and they're sleeping in the dust of the earth. Now, this period of time, if if we take the dust of the earth from verse 2, and we add it together, we get exactly 17 years. That is, we get the number that is um, 6210. Now, it would be 17 years in one day because it's 6210 would represent, uh, if you divided it by 365 and a quarter, it would be uh, 17 years and three quarters of a day. So if you placed it at in the right spot, that is, you'd have to start it where the leap years line up a certain way for it to be exactly 17 years. So that means in one in four places that you would place it, it would be 17 years, and three out of the four places you would place it randomly, it would be um, 17 years in one day. But but it's 17 years. Okay. Now, where would we mark 17 years? So where, where are we mostly counting from when we're doing doing this? We, we usually count from 9-11. So, I mean, if we count 17 years from 9-11, 
if we do, and, and in this case, it, it, we would have to do an inclusive count to come to September 11th, 2018. Is there anything significant about September 11th, 2018? So that's 17 years from September 11th, 2001. Anything significant that we know of? Wasn't that about the time just before Jeff was going to go into retirement? 2018? Yeah. This is when we're doing the time setting stuff. Okay. Now it's it's not one year before. Did they close Lambert on September 11th, 2019? I'm just asking Iran here. Yeah. Okay. So on September 11th, 2018, Heidi and I had come to the School of the Prophets uh, at Jeff's invitation, and I'm going to do my first presentation in 2018 on September 11th. Anything else about September 11th, 2018? So I would say September 11th, 2018, it, it would be significant in that I do this presentation on Ezra. So that's going to be the study that I end up doing, going through Ezra 7 to 10, and, um, and, and that's going to, and, and dealing with the week of Christ. So that, that whole study that I do in 2018. So that begins on September 11th. Okay. So. So that's going to be 17 years to the day from September 11th, 2001. Is is there any place else we could put the 17 years, or is that does that give us enough enough of a symbol? So that's the dust of the earth, right? So we have it. It's 17 years. Six zero eight three plus one two seven gives us 17 years. Now we know that that's also a symbol. Where's the 17 years a symbol? So the story of Joseph, right? So Joseph's going to be 17 when he has his two dreams and then is sold into slavery. So those that sleep in the dust of the earth, if the dust, dust of the earth represents 17 years, how does the 17 years relate as a symbol to the dust of the earth? Is there anything that we can connect the dust of the earth? Like if we connect it to the story of Joseph, how does it connect us to the story of Joseph as a symbol? And also we know the special resurrection is about these two classes. Uh, some awake, they, they shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Nobody has any ideas? Nobody has any thoughts on this? Do we connect this with the seven, the first 17 years of, of Joseph's life, or do we connect this with his time from Egypt? Okay, so, um, so if we're going to take the 17 years, that's the first 17 years of Joseph's life, so it's a preparatory period. Now, we know that Joseph is with his father for 17 years. Then 11 years, he's working for Potiphar and then in prison. He interprets the dreams of the butler and baker. And then 11 years until his dream is fulfilled. And then 17 years again with his father before his father dies, right? So that's this structural chiasm of 17, 11, 11, and 17. And then the second period of 11 is divided into 2, 9, and 2, right? And then the last period of 17 years is divided into 5 and 12. Okay. I don't know if that helps answer your question or not. I'm just trying to think of it, how we relate this symbolically with what we're, with what we're trying to apply here with the movement. Yeah. Well, I, I look at it as a preparatory period. So it's going to bring us from 9-11 to the presentations that are done on September 11th in 2018. And, and these are key presentations. I mean, you know, one is it's key that I'm there in the first place and that I'm doing these presentations, which are then going to open up all kinds of things uh, dealing with, obviously, July 18th, but even the affirmation of uh, November 9th and so forth. It's not just like these studies have a lot to do with understanding the chronology and, and fitting things into place. So you could say that Joseph has his two dreams when he's 17. So then we would say that those dreams are fulfilled in some way. Now we're not, um, I know we're not going to count like 22 years from there, right? From 2018, you know, to get to 2040 or anything like that. But symbols might, might be there. So I don't know. 
all I know is that we have this symbol and it fits in with what we're studying. The question is exactly where does this go? So the special resurrection has to do with this movement. It's typifying this awakening. So they have the dust of the earth shall awake. Now, six, nine, seven, four is a period of um, 19 years and uh, some days. So 19 years and 34 days. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. All I know is it represents the separation in the movement. So, so we can connect it there with the 17 years. I guess what we would have to do is, is see how we would connect it with our time. So we have, have shame, right? So we have everlast, everlast, everlasting life and everlasting con- and shame and everlasting contempt. So these are the two classes and, and they're going to awake. So many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth. So uh, what about the word sleep itself? So the word sleep, yeshan, or yeshen, just means sleepy, right, or sleep. And they're going to sleep in the dust of the earth, which we already dealt with the dust of the earth, which I should put in his notes. Okay, so 9-11-18, the Islamic year. I don't understand what you're asking, Angela. I just looked the date up and then I'm just asking whether that has anything. We've got the Islamic New Year and the Jewish New Year right around that time. So does it mean anything? In which year? In 2018? Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's the last day of the Islamic year is what you're saying. So September 11, 2018 is the last day of the Islamic year. Right. The next day, September 12th, is going to be the first day of the first month. Yeah. So I would say that's significant. So September 11th is in uh, an inclusive count, right, for 17 years, because technically it'd be 17 years and three quarters on average. So so that would bring us to the first day of the first month. OK. Does that make sense to people? What what we just said. So I'll just show you here. So I'm going to go back to 9-11, and that was, we had added a dust of the earth, 6083 plus 127 equals 6210. And so we count 6210 from September 11th. So this, this calculator is going to count it at midnight, beginning on September 11th, right? And then it's going to, midnight ending September 11th is where it's going to go to. So an inclusive count would be from September 11th, 2001 to September 11th, the end of the day in 2018. And you can see in the Islamic calendar, what's the year? It's the first day of the first month of what year? 1440. 1440. Okay. So is that significant? It's in the yes. number of minutes in a day. It's the number of minutes in the day. And of course, it's one one hundredth of 144,000, right? So it gives us a symbol of time. It gives us the first day of the first month. And we're already using the first day of the first month to represent a type of a, of a close of probation, right? That makes sense? Makes sense to me. Yeah. So, so I think that is uh, very significant. So we need to put that in our notes. Okay. So when we look at the dust of the earth, um, H6083 plus H127 equals 6212 days from September 11th, 2001 to. So, so we have two witnesses, so to speak. We have the presentation of Ezra and it brings us to the first day of the first month in 1440 in the year of the Hajjij. Yeah, and also we can see that 6210 has a 1260 attached to it up there. Okay, okay. so we got um, the year of the Hajjij, Islamic year. So I, I think that's pretty pretty significant. So So we're connecting it here to that history, which we've already connected the first day of the first month to 2024. Just looking at some things here in the chronology of this. So from September 11th, 2018, 
to um, July 18, 2020 was um, 676 days. So I just put in some of these dates um, that we had already. Okay, so um, so the word earth there. So we have different words for earth, right? So sometimes they use 776. And, and that's right. So that's, that's the one that's often translated land and so forth. Uh, but this earth here, Adama, this is where we get the name Adam. So it's the Hebrew number 127. So, so this would bring us back to the creation of man, right? That's why we have this, this word. So, so what it's doing is it's connecting the beginning and the end, the end and the beginning. Does that make sense to people? So the first time that we're going to have that word as is in Genesis 1.25. God made, it says here, and let me do that here. You know, you got blocks there, but God made the beast of the earth and his kind, the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing upon the earth. So the first earth there is 776 at its um, in Genesis 1.25. And then. When it says creepeth up on the earth, that's going to be uh, one, two, seven. And it's also going to be called ground. That's going to be um, God for man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. And the breath of life there is not going to be ruach. It's going to be uh, that word, the other word for breathe, uh, nephish. So we have this word earth. Now, if we count from the first day of the first month in 2024 to August 15th, 2024, it's going to be 127 days, which is that word Earth. And, then, and we also know that that represents July 21st, midnight as well, right? Just in reverse, 721. And then if we count from the first day of the first month to today is 125 days. Um, I don't know if that matters. I just put today in there. Okay. So I'm just doing some analysis here. <clears throat> okay. So we have that anyway, the, the dust of the earth. Okay. So we've got everlasting life. So we got life, everlasting life. And then we have shame and everlasting contempt. Now, of course, we already looked at shame. That's the reverse of 1872, uh, which is July 18, 2020. We have shall awake as well, which we didn't really look at, 6974. I think we actually did. We started looking at it, right, because that's going to be 19 years. Yeah, that's what I did. I know this is kind of moving a bit slow. Now, if we take 6974, that brings us to October 15th, 2020. It, it is the 27th day of the seventh month. Did we look at this before? So shall awake, 6974. From September 11th, it brings us to October 15th, 2020. Now, we know that that's in the time that this movement is, uh, that's before they have the, the committee set up, because I think that's October 30th or something like that, or 28th. So did we talk about this October 15th? Wasn't that a present? No, that's not a presentation, because that's a Thursday. It's number 40 in the studies of Ezekiel that we do that. Whether that's significant or not, we're going to be studying Ezekiel 21, verse 1 to 7. So I don't know specifically. Now, Ezekiel 21, what's that about? Everybody should know that. It comes after Ezekiel 20. So in Ezekiel 20 to 23, uh, they're going to be dealing with uh, the judgments upon Jerusalem, prophesying against the land of Israel. This is chapter 21. So maybe that's something that, that it's pointing us to. I don't know. So yeah, there's a lot of things that we have to consider. And I, you know, I've been looking at this like every single way that I possibly could. But as far as these numbers are concerned, you know, we, we have some, but not everything's answered. So we're, we're going to have to think about that a bit more. Okay. So that's Daniel 12 verse one to four. I put in here also Daniel 12, five to seven and eight to 13. Right. So we're going to be looking at these as well. So just a couple of things that I noticed. So I'm just kind of changing topics here a little bit. I was looking at um, some words here 
and let's see if I can remember what I did. You're going to have his, he holds up his right hand and his left hand, right? So he's going to, um, and I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand. So right hand and left hand. So this is 8040 plus 3225. And I get 11,265. 11,265 is 30 years and some period of time, which is 307 days. 307 days. And then what I did is I went from 1989. Yeah, so this was kind of interesting in the context of what we're studying now. So if I take left hand and right hand, and I count the number of days from November 9th, 1989. So I'll show you what I'm doing. I get to September 11th, 2020. Now, we already talked about September 11th, 2018. So we get another September 11th, but this time it's um, 11,000. Oops, I could put the minus in there. 11,265. So I, I'm... I'm putting 264 because I'm doing an inclusive count. And that's going to bring me to November 9th, 1989. Right. So the inclusive count, and so I'll do that again, 11,264 will bring me to, whoops, did that wrong. Okay. So we have these, this other September 11th, September 11th, 2018, September 11th, 2020. So what does that tell us? That we're going to just take left hand and right hand. Now, what what is the left hand and the right hand? So let's go back to, and, and why are these September 11th showing up? Um, so you got right hand right here, and this left hand. Okay, so you got left hand and right hand. We're going to tell, say that uh, this is H. What's the number again? Three two two five and. We'll do it that way. So, so we have 11.9 and 9.11 tied together. So one of the things that we're starting to see as we look at Daniel chapter 12 is that these verses keep bringing together 11.9 and 9.11. They keep connecting us to 9.11. Stephen Jameson's birthday connects us to 9.11 and 11.9. Right. Okay. And, and we know that these are, well, they're important dates. So, we know that 9-11 represents the first day of the first month, right? That's how Jeff's line was. You know, 9-11 lines up with April 19th, 1844. And then, you know, that's just a basic part of his structure. Now, we can also see that 11-9, 2019, also symbolizes the first day of the first month, because really 9-11 and 11-9 are the same symbol. They're all representing closes of probation. And this goes back to the study that I did um, in 2018 at the camp meeting. So when I do that, the presentations on the camp meeting dealing with the week of Christ, I'm showing that this is about symbols dealing with the close of probation. And, and then I make the argument that the close of probation that's happening November 9th, 2019, is not let him that is righteous be righteous still. That this is about a separation of two classes, but it's not about the perfection of of the 144,000. You're not, you're not going to be sealed so that you can't sin or anything like that. Right. You're not going to have all your sins blotted out, but you can't bring them to remembrance. That doesn't happen until the close of probation. Um, so we keep getting pointed to this symbol in this. And, and, and that's kind of logical, right? Because Daniel chapter 12 deals with Michael standing up and closing probation. So the fact that we have all of these symbols connecting us to 9-11, 11-9, to the first day of the first month, etc., that would make sense. So, so it's all consistent. So not just in verses, you know, chapter chapter 12, verse 1 to 4, but also we see here later on in verse, whatever it is, verse 6. This is also going to be, so when we look at Daniel chapter 12, so I'm just going to look at it here. It's, it's actually going to be verse seven where he lifts up his left hand and his right hand. Okay. Cause the question in, in verse six is how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? 
And verse 7 is a longer verse. And I heard the man clothed with linen upon, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever, that it shall be four times, times, and in half. Now, one thing we'll notice here is that the word times is not the word that we had in verse two, verse one, right? Right. So we have time, even that same time, that's going to be six, two, five, six. Here we're going to have time, times, and in half, and this is going to be moed, right? Four, one, five, zero. This refers to a feast. And then the half is just going to be a kisse. It's the half or the middle, right? So it can be into two parts. The idea is it's two parts. So we understand this to be the 1260 of the scattering of the power of the holy people. This isn't the 1260 years of the treading underfoot. Now, what about uh, the symbols here themselves? How, how could we analyze these numbers time, times, and in half? Any ideas? Okay. We've taken it in the past as being 1260, but is this is this going to be another symbol? The 126, is it going to be something else? What? How are you approaching this one? Okay. So when we have times as the number 6256, it represents 360 because 6 times 2 times 5 times 6 is 360. So we had in the Hebrew number, we had a symbol. So I'm... So when we look at here and we look at these times, times and then half, the question is, do we have something like that with these numbers? So is there something we can do with these numbers? Okay, I'm trying to read this footnote or this chat here. Left and right hand. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Is that the one? Matthew 6, 3 and 4. Okay, so at Jonah 4.11, there's six score thousand persons that cannot discern between 100, uh, 120,000 persons that cannot discern between their right hand and their left hand, which is about sparing Nineveh. I don't know if I would connect that or not. And then Matthew 25, 31 and 30 to 33, when they divide, separate, the shepherd separates the sheep. He sets the sheep on his left hand and the goats on, or the sheep on his right hand, the goats on his left, representing the judgment. So that's a separation of two classes. So, I mean, we can see that left and right, obviously, are opposites in that sense. Now, when we have looked at Daniel chapter 12, I mean, I've seen people try to interpret this as the 225 20s. Right, the left and his right hand, and you know, so there's the twelve sixty or the up the two twenty five twenties, the two twelve sixties, because uh, it talks about twelve sixty, and so they say there's two of them to make twenty five twenty, and and I've thought about that, but I I don't think that's what I would do with it, but you know, I could be wrong, because um, this is sp- specifically pairing with uh, Revelation chapter ten. Right. So we know that he's going to swear as well that there should be time no longer. And so, you know, there is kind of an argument that could be made. Maybe he's saying, you know, there's the one hand we have the 1260 um, for the accomplishing the scatter of the power of the holy people. And it's going to be at the end of the second 1260 that there's time no longer. And of course, this is going to connect to the 1290 and the 1335, right? This 1260. So there's an overlap there of the 30 years. But getting back to this time, times, and then half. So we could take the numbers, you know, you could take 41 times 50, for instance, 41 times 50, and then half of 41 times 50, right? So you take 41 times 50 times three, and then half of 41 times 50. So 41 times 50 is 2050. So you take 2050 times three, uh, that's 6,150, and then you add half of that of 2050, which is 1,025, and you get 7,175. And if you take that and you divide it by 365 and a quarter, you're going to get this 19 years and a bit more, right? So it's 
going to be 19 years, like 200 days or something, 200 and some days, 235 days. And of course, we, we could count that from 9-11. That's going to bring us to May 4th, 2021. So nothing significant there. But that's kind of an unusual way to do it. I mean, I could just simply take 4150 times 3 and then add the 2, 6, 7, 7. And I'm going to get 15,127. And that's going to be a period of 41 years or something like that. Might be more than that. 41 and almost a half. So 41 years, 151 or 152 days, which I don't know where we would place that. Uh, one, one, five, one, two, seven. If I start in 1989, I'm going to come to 2031, uh, April 10th, 2031. If I do inclusive, I would come to April 9th, 2031, which would be the wave sheaf offering in 2031. 16th of Nissan, it's March 27th on the Julian calendar. I don't know. So those are things that we could do, but whether that fits, I don't, I don't particularly think it tells us anything. Okay. So, so we still have some more things to look at the scattering of the power of the holy people. Right. So lots of different numbers. And I've looked at these already. Right. So I'm just kind of doing what I've already done. So I didn't find anything, but it doesn't mean that there isn't something there. Okay. Any final thoughts before we close with prayer? Now, lots to think about. We're gonna we're gonna start drawing these things on the line, putting some of these spans of time, and I'm sure things will show up. Okay, let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study this morning, and we just ask for your help this week as we continue to look at these things. We can see clearly that that you are showing us that this movement is at a period of a close of probation. And we need to understand what that means for us as individuals and how we are to relate uh, to this movement. Help us to trust in you and to continue to learn of you. May your angels watch over each one, our families, and, um, and our contacts with others. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.